My name is Chuck, and recently, I killed my lawn. And it was a big mistake. I know what you all are thinking. That's a bit dramatic, Chuck. And you're not wrong. However, here lately, I have started to regret the route I've taken with this renovation. And one of the main reasons is that if you go back on my channel, back to 2018, that's why I decided to rehab the lawn at my old house. I say rehab because I was still new into the whole lawn care, DIY lawn care stuff. So I wasn't comfortable using a chemical like glyphosate or anything like that. So I was hoping just to turn around without killing it off first. And that lawn was in a way worse starting position than this lawn was. That lawn was well over 90% weeds to zero desirable turf. Cause I wanted a fescue lawn and that lawn had no fescue in it. So it was gonna be a 100% change. And I was able to do it without killing it off, without using any tenacity. All it was was hard work, some elbow grease, and that lawn was transformed within a year and a half, and I bet I could have done it sooner had I stuck with everything that following spring of 2019. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can also transform your lawn starting this fall. It's not too late, but starting this fall, you can completely transform your lawn without the use of glyphosate or tenacity. First thing you want to do is you want to scalp your lawn, take your lawnmower, put it to its lowest setting, and go to town on your lawn. You will try to just take up as much material as possible. After you do, and you do that initial scalp, I'd say if you can get your hands on a power rake or a dethatcher, go ahead and do that because I think it does a good job of removing any additional material that maybe the mower didn't pick up, whether it's mad down grass, Use a power rake, a dethatcher, get that, all that stuff up, run it over with the mower again, and then you're gonna have a really nice seed bed when it comes time to put down your grass seed. Next, go ahead and aerate your lawn. This could be a bit pricey, but go ahead and rent it with some neighbors, with some family members. Do several lawns in a day to really help bring that price down. And if you're living in a place that uh, maybe never has had their lawn taken care of, I say, uh, at a minimum, do two passes. This is in a checkerboard pattern. If you can do three or four passes, go for it. I mean, this process is gonna kick your butt. It's the hardest process, in my opinion, of an entire renovation is the aeration. However, pull as many cores as possible, and you're looking for something at least the size of your thumb. To help get that, especially if your lawn is really compacted and dry, water at least the week before, several, you know, maybe three or four days, definitely water the day before or the morning of to really help loosen up that soil a little bit so you can pull a nice plug. Now, whether or not you should remove the plugs or keep the plugs, that is up to you. I have personally never removed the plugs. I've left them because at the bare minimum, the way I look at it is you are bringing soil out of the ground and putting it on the surface, which is helping with that seed to soil contact. I understand the arguments that some people make that, hey, there could be dormant weed seeds hidden beneath the surface that now you're bringing up to the surface and now they will start to grow or something. Maybe, I honestly don't know. I personally think, now if you're going for like a real mow thing, if you're putting down Kentucky bluegrass with the, the goal of real mowing, you may wanna go ahead and remove the cores, but I'm planting, you know, I like to plant tall fescue. So I'm not looking for real mowing here and I'm not looking for a picturesque level flat lawn. There's gonna be a little bit of bumps and the soil's gonna break down anyway. So I go ahead, I leave the cores, you do whatever you wanna do. Now here comes the most expensive part of the process in my opinion, and that is grass seed. The reason this is the most expensive part is because I think it needs to be, you need to get a good high quality grass seed to put down. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's fescue, Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, get something that is high quality, Learn to read labels. There's several videos about reading grass seed labels, but you're looking for something with almost zero, preferably zero weed seeds, zero crop seeds, high germination rate, 85% or better. Now you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or another big box store and grab a bag of Scott's or Pennington or Rebel or whatever. The problem with those um, grass seeds are is that they can tend to be older sitting on those shelves for over a year. They do tend to have weed and crop seeds, even if it is a small amount. 
but I'd say don't introduce new weed seeds if you can help it. You don't know if there's weed seeds in those cores, but there is, if it says there's weed seeds on there, there's weed seeds in the bag. So don't put any of those things down. I'd say get a good high quality grass seed. Use NTEP uh, testing to in your local area, your local extension office, to see what grass types, which cultivars grow best in your area and spend a little bit more money on your grass seed. I also recommend seeding heavy. Don't go light on the grass seed. If you're doing tall fescue like I am, I'd say do 10 to 12 pounds per thousand. Kentucky bluegrass, you know, typically I think it's three to four pounds per thousand. I'd say go up to six pounds per thousand. What you are trying to do here is you're trying to outcompete the weeds in your lawn. The reason why weeds are so rampant is because there's no competition. So if you put a lot of grass seed down, have a lot of grass growing, that is going to smother out the weeds, which will make them hard to grow, especially in future years, because you have a nice thick turf, so there's no room for weeds to grow. So put as much competition down as possible by really putting down a heavy amount of grass seed. Now something you can save money on to help get better, more expensive, high quality grass seed is your starter fertilizer. Don't spend money on something that says starter fertilizer. It's completely unnecessary. A lot of people actually don't put any starter fertilizer down when they put their grass seed down because there's enough nutrients and energy in the seed itself to start germinating with water. However, I do think you should put something down, but you can go to your local co-op, go to the big box stores and get something that's like a triple 16, which is all three numbers in the bag are the same. A triple, typically something triple 12 or better or higher numbers I think is better because you're looking for a high phosphorus number, which is that second one. So if you can find a triple 16 or triple 15, that will be plenty because the first number of the nitrogen helps the grass, the actual leaf tissue, the, the blades of grass come up out of it. The second number, the phosphorus, is what helps bring the roots down into the soil. So get a high second number if at all possible. So a triple 16 or triple 15 will be more than enough to get your grass seed growing. An optional step here is peat moss. Some people use it, some people don't. I personally do use it. I think it is a good to have a little covering on it, putting a little bit of organic material on the lawn at the same time. It does help with water retention or moisture, uh, holding moisture in it, keep the grass seed wet for a little while. And it's also a good indi indicator whether or not you need to water your grass seed or not. Speaking of watering, I typically do three times a day for 15 minutes a zone. If it's a hotter day, you know, I may add an additional uh, watering cycle, but typically three times a day, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., 6 p.m. I've never had an issue with that and I've had great results. So that's it for this video. I do feel somewhat guilty having killed the lawn off and not just pushing what I had because I could have done these same exact steps. I'm in, I was in a much better starting position than I was in 2018. I have more knowledge than I did in 2018, but you know, I, I made my bed, now I gotta lay in it, I guess. So hopefully now I caught you before you went ahead and killed your lawn because it's not a necessary step to have a fantastic lawn. You don't even need tenacity. <gasps> I know a lot of people like to put down tenacity as a pre and a post emergent at seeding. I didn't do that in 2018. I did do it in the fall of 2019, mind you, but I didn't do it in 2018 and my lawn was still doing really, really well. So save that 60 bucks buying a bottle of Roundup that you don't really need. That's my opinion. Anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, I thank you so much. Please give me a thumbs up. It really makes a big difference on the growth of this channel. Hit the subscribe button if you want to. I'll leave that part up to you. But anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless.